so we'll start so it's already 7 o'clock in fact 7 past 1 and now uh, 1 past 7 and now we're going to start with the topic of today that is introduction to thorax introduction to thorax so basically we are going to discuss about what is the thoracic cavity what is the thoracic cavity what are the boundaries of it which consist or which rather than consist we can say which form the thoracic bound uh, thoracic uh, uh, the cavity and how is it important clinically to us first we will see this and then onwards next talk next discussion we will keep on going with the you know uh, rest of the details of each and every organ that is the heart and then uh, you have the lungs then you have the aorta inferior vena cava and uh, other topics sinus vein etc uh, in include also includes thoracic duct these are the important chapters which a surgeon has to deal and he he must know about them once he is into surgery and also the medicine faculty needs to know uh, some things like which is the triangle of auscultation or rather triangle of auscultation you can where do you auscultate which murmur where and all that is a part of medicine but we are going to discuss about introduction to thorax today and now we are going to start with the discussion okay so uh, i'll start with the boundaries i have a uh, this diagram we have already uh, we have already uh, you know discussed uh, some time back uh, but it is i think i don't find any other diagram to be as perfect as this one to explain to you what is basically the thorax okay so simply you can imagine that thorax is a cavity uh, which is have which is bound by some boundaries on all its sides so if you see a sagittal section sagittal section means what the person is standing like this okay and he is seeing in front as a are yaar yeah he is seeing like this okay so you can see only this side you can't see this side and you can only see this leg माणूस असा थांबला आहे तो तिकडे पाहतोय आणि तुम्ही त्याला असं वरून कट केलं असं जायटल सुचरच्या अलॉंग देन यू कॅन सी द हा सो नाव दिस इज द लेफ्ट साइडेड व्ह्यू लॅटरल व्ह्यू वॉट वी आर गोइंग टू सी इज द लॅटरल व्ह्यू अँड यू आर गोइंग टू जस्ट रिमूव्ह द लेफ्ट पार्ट रिमूव्ह द लेफ्ट रिमूव्ह द लेफ्ट पार्ट अँड देन सी so if you remove the left hand if the person is seeing in this side is facing this side then this becomes your anterior this becomes your posterior this becomes your superior and this is your inferior and what you are viewing is the lateral view okay so now coming to the diagram okay so thorax mandla nantar apan chati var hat thevto to hat jo thevto to kuthe padto to sternum varti padto and this is the sternum with uh, three parts of it that is the manubrium this part which usually our textbooks like bdc do not mention which is called as gladiolus which is called as no no how come it is uh, it is not dark on the screen it is visible is it visible to all of you please reply is it visible to all of you ah uh, okay so are you you have some local connection problem please rectify it uh, i think the page is visible to all of you so this is a hello yes yes everyone i i know it is visible so please mute off your uh, okay i need to mute okay so yeah yes rishikesh mali we are we are yes please mute your mics please it it creates a lot of disturbance please yeah so coming back to the discussion please do not disturb yeah so yeah so this is the gladiolus okay gladiolus 
this is the manubrium and this is the zephyster or the xiphoid process okay now here is the thoracic inlet this is the diaphragm which forms the thoracic outlet now don't go to the exact i mean i'm attempting to draw it exactly but yet the thing is that uh, this comes so uh, there are different levels of the diaphragm i mean normally it is at one level when you inspire at that time diaphragm goes down it has some extent to, to uh, according to the vertebral level to which it goes and when you expire there is some uh, level at which it goes so this is a homework for you you want to tell me that when you inspire so what is the lowest level to which the diaphragm goes lowest level of vertebra and when you expire which is the lowest level to uh, which is the highest level to which the diaphragm goes and normally when you are breathing uh, i mean uh, when you are uh, in the intermediate position on an average where is the level of the diaphragm okay this is a homework for you guys you got to tell me where does the diaphragm lies this may be a, an uh, our uh, one of the mcq questions as well so you coming to our topic so behind is the vertebral column and i already told you that that there is a there is a imaginary line that that ends at the base of t4 we already discussed this diagram but yet when we are studying thorax we need to get back to this okay this is the t4 this is the t12 this is the t10 and this is t8 say here somewhere around here is t8 okay up here is the rest of the thing this is t1 now one of the most important things which you need to understand is that this is the thoracic cavity so posteriorly it is it is it is bound uh, bordered by the vertebral column this you can imagine see until and unless you don't imagine you will not be able to you know ever become a good surgeon and uh, until you get the susurut wannabe's models once you get them then you need not imagine you can directly see it in the model so this is the vertebral column posteriorly age se sternum and then superiorly there's a imaginary line and yes if someone will tell me the name of the you know that fascia which you had mentioned if someone tells me the name of the fascia i'll get a prize yes can anyone tell me till then lower you have the diaphragm you have the diaphragm oh till now i have received no answer so the prize is gone and i'll tell this is sipson's fascia uh, my spelling may be wrong kindly consider this is the sipson's fascia sipson's fascia okay so these are the roughly you know the boundaries and on the either sides laterally uh, you have the ribs and you have the intercostal muscles so laterally what do you have laterally you have the ribs and you have the intercostal muscles okay intercostal muscles so this is about the thorax roughly the cavity that how it is formed and what are the boundaries now coming to the question which i had already asked you once that uh, what are the seven diaphragms because one is here and the other is here right one is here and the other is here so you need to know those seven diaphragms i repeat them again today in today's lecture because they are at most important okay so starting from superior to inferior so so that it will be a revision to you guys also i hope okay so the first is a roof of pituitary fossa that is cella tarsica roof of pituitary see this is the name i will write here and here i will write the location rough location or the part which is forming it okay and the anatomical part so roof of pituitary fossa pituitary which is also known as 
yes epiphysis cerebri and hypothalamus which is known as hypophysis cerebri well that is not the discussion so this is cella tarsica that is pituitary fossa which is also known as cella tarsica and if you already learnt in the 12th standard and the roof of it so that is the diaphragm celli diaphragm celli the second one is so there are total seven as i have already told to you there are the second one is the optic diaphragm okay optic diaphragm which is formed by the iris as you can say okay iris orbit okay the optic diaphragm the third one is in the mandible which you call as the oral diaphragm in the mandible formed by what yes correct mylohyoid muscle brilliant answer mylohyoid muscle then is as you know it is in the thorax that is the respiratory diaphragm the fifth one is the in the pelvis that is the pelvic diaphragm as you all know we discussed it roughly when we were talking about uterus and its supports oh i am sorry i missed the one here the fourth one that is the cervical fascia right yeah this is the cervical fascia cervical fascia i am sorry this is the urogenital diaphragm here. okay so this is cervical fascia and it is forming the yeah which diaphragm yes See, cervical fascia actually is the part of pleura. Why am I highlighting this? This will be your viva question if you answer very. Uh, if you answer in the till the end, they will ask you what is cervical fascia. It's a part of the pleura. It's a part of the pleura that that you know cervical part of the pleura which is covered by this fascia, not part of the pleura. In the sense above the pleura it is. So the pleural part, the cervical part of the pleura. Which is covered by this this fascia, okay, cervical fascia. So this is also called as the cervical fascia. This is very important for you. So you can take a photograph of this, the seven diaphragms. Yeah, so that you can share the photograph screenshot on your on the group. So with this, I'll also like to mention one important question. Like these seven diaphragms, what you also have in the body are the three watershed lines. What are these watershed lines? I will tell you. Watershed line का मतलब ऐसा है कि वो line may it be imaginary, may it be anatomical. वो line के ऊपर see this is different, okay? Nothing to do with these diaphragms and with these. But हमारे काम की बात है इधर इसीलिए I'm coming to you. So this above that line. and below that line the blood supply which includes arterial as well as venous the lymphatic drainage the nerve supply all this is different above that line and below that line in the human body the blood supply the lymphatic drainage the nerve supply all this is different all this is different and there are such three watershed lines in the human body okay now i will tell you one by one one is the umbilicus an imaginary line which passes horizontally from the umbilicus it separates the two zones of all these blood supply lymphatic drainage and nerve supply so umbilicus umbilicus ke upar ek hai umbilicus ke niche ek hai you can go and see which blood vessels and which nerves and which lymphatic drainage but it is different okay the second is the rather second you can say this is the second one the first is uh, if we go from superior to inferior then the first one is the vocal fold of larynx but because it was not taught to you so i did not mention vocal fold of larynx first one is the vocal fold of larynx so larynx ke andar do folds hai usme do jo vocal folds hai मतलब the two the total uh, the vocal folds which are there 
okay so the nerve supply blood supply above them is different below them is different and the third one third one is the pectinate line the third one is the pectinate line of anal canal third one is the pectinate line of the anal canal so in your homework is in your body where all these pectinate lines are there except the other than anal canal you are going to tell me okay what is the homework pectinate lines ye kahan kahan pe hai body mein you need to tell me other than anal canal on the group this is the question for you homework so two homeworks be one homework is that you need to tell me the levels of diaphragm and inspiration expiration and average on an average where it is and third you have to second you have to tell me the pectinate lines where all you see okay you need to search and you need to answer me on the group so we discussed about the fascia and uh, this right now we will go to the basics of thorax now you have to remember that once you get accustomed to the positions of the things in the thorax then it becomes very much easy for you to remember things or understand things so the main components as i already i have discussed in the initial part i enumerated some and listed some so uh, those you can just recall and as you know you had learned about mediastinum so just now the diagram which we saw i can again use it one of the uh, today I'll, i'll just talk about uh, you know rough idea about mediastinum then in detail we will see it tomorrow the complete mediastinum because there are some cross sectional structures and there are some diagrams which i need to you know explain to you which are going to take a lot of time almost one hour and they cannot be finished up or wound up uh, you know wow, wound up in just uh, half an hour today so there's no point in discussing half things so i'll just give you a brief idea about mediastinum and then i will tell you about uh, and also explain about the intercostal muscles and the vessels and then we can because these are all short notes which they will be keep uh, they will be asking you mediastinum is a leg so we'll discuss tomorrow i'll give you a brief idea but the intercostal muscles and vessels will discuss and the most important which you need to always remember is the sections cross sections of the thorax of the mediastinum rather which is very important day after we will talk about heart and lungs and rather heart and coronary circulation and then lungs on the second day with bronchopulmonary segments because they have a lot of applied anatomy and once we discuss these cross sectional structures uh, there will be almost no need to discuss differently the thoracic duct and all but we'll wind up them wind them up in just one lecture the thoracic duct the uh, inferior vena cava and the aorta okay so now just talking to you about the mediastinum as you already done with that uh, very simple for you we saw the boundaries here with the help of this diagram yes so here is the heart as you all know right तो so, अभी थोड़ा समझ लो मेरा डायग्राम इतना अच्छा नहीं है सो द मीडिया सिनम आई विल ब्रीफली फास्टली ब्रीफ यू बिकॉज यू ऑलरेडी डन विद दिस सिलेबस सो इट्स अ रिवीजन काइंड ऑफ थिंग टू यू सो सी दिस इज अ सुपीरियर आई थिंक आई शुड यूज अनदर कलर्ड पेन और या हियर इट इज सो दिस इज द सुपीरियर मीडिया सिनम राइट सुपीरियर मीडिया सिनम एंड अ वेरी फ्रीक्वेंटली अ वेरी फ्रीक्वेंटली आस्क क्वेश्चन is superior mediastinum very frequently saq they can ask or if they ask they can ask it as a part of laq saying that uh, briefly describe about mediastinum different mediastinums and then you talk about superior mediastinum and applied anatomy so it can be a laq as well part of laq okay part of laq so superior mediastinum then this is the inferior mediastinum okay inferior mediastinum in inferior you have the three parts the anterior the middle and the posterior okay so just briefly talking superior mediastinum has lot two cross sections and two diagrams uh, which we will discuss tomorrow in detail middle mediastinum is all about heart it's the pericardial sac which forms the medial uh, middle mediastinum of the inferior mediastinum and posterior mediastinum also we'll see tomorrow along with superior mediastinum anterior mediastinum there is as such uh, nothing much to discuss there are just two three structures which i'll enumerate now and label 
so that uh, we don't have to give a different time slot for this. Now uh, you need to understand. Uh, see, there are just ten minutes left for this meeting, so we'll wind up first with this, and then uh, we can uh, continue. Okay. So uh, I was talking to you about the anterior media stream. Okay. So if if you recall, I don't know. This is the cadaver. Okay, like this. When you do dissection, okay, this is the cadaver. And uh, when you, uh, I don't know how did you do the dissection, how genuinely, but when you separate the thorax, I mean by cutting the ribs and then from the side, okay. And when you lift this about like this, when you reflect it like this, like this, from at the lower sternum, when you reflect it, see if this is a this is a person sleeping. This is his thoracic cavity and this is the samne wala rib cage ka part and you reflect it like this by cutting it from the side from the uh, from the ribs when you reflect it like this at that time either beech mein kya rahega sternum okay this is the sternum okay this is see i am i am trying to color my hand and i am trying to tell you this is sternum and on either sides of the sternum actually galat ho gaya uh, i should have draw see this is the sternum i'll do it in blue Here is the sternum, and on either sides of the sternum, see. Okay, I, I think I am making you visible this way. So I'll tell you again. Just get uh, oriented with what I am saying. This is the this is the thoracic cavity. This is the anterior aspect. This is the your the posterior aspect of the anterior wall of the thoracic cage. This is ये मानसा ची समोर ची छाती आए तेरा तुम्ही रिब साइड नी कट केले आणि असे रिफ्लेक्ट केले तेरे अब्दामन वर्ती तो तुम्हाला आठ काय दिसना रे इथे तुम्हारा सग फेशिया मसल्स दिखाती इतने 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 डायरेक्टली लंग्स हार्ट दिसेल राइट यू विल सी द लंग्स एंड द हार्ट इन बिटवीन राइट एंड ऑल द इंटरनल स्ट्रक्चर्स हियर व्हाट यू विल सी ऑन द रिफ्लेक्टेड रिब केज इज दैट हियर इन बिटवीन यू विल इन मिडल यू विल द स्टर्नम एंड ऑन आईदर साइड यू विल सी टू पार्नल गोइंग स्ट्रक्चर्स दोज आर द इंटरनल थोरासिक आर्टरीज इंटरनल थोरासिक आर्टरीज अ ब्रांच ऑफ कम ऑन हू विल टेल मी internal thoracic artery is a branch of again a homework i'm not going to tell everything internal thoracic artery is a branch of so this is a very important structure internal thoracic artery you must see this in the dissection on the either sides of the sternum you have the internal thoracic artery and now you you know you you use this internal thoracic artery in the yes correct in the plasty in the, not in the plasty in the open heart surgery when you put a bypass So you either use the great, uh, great vein, uh, this great saphenous vein. You put it uh, invertedly, right? Otherwise, uh, I mean the part of great saphenous vein, not the, not of course the complete thing. Uh, the part of the uh, great saphenous vein, you graft it in the bypass surgery, or you use the internal thoracic artery. Okay, internal thoracic artery. So, इसी के साथ एक applied question और है कि which is the muscle you can use for grafting? Arteries we saw that we use for grafting, which is the muscle you use for grafting. The muscle used for graft is the gracilis muscle. Is it correct? Gracilis muscle. Can anyone tell me? Am I right? And which is the bone which you use for grafting? It is tibia. Why? Can I, uh, sorry, fibula. Can anyone tell me why? Okay, this is again a question to you. See, gracilis muscle is almost. Even if you remove, there is not a big problem. We use it for grafting and fibula. Tibia holds the main, uh, you know, main weight. It is a weight, main weight bearing bone, and fibula is used for grafting. So, if you see the applied anatomy of this muscle and this bone and this artery, internal thoracic artery and the vein, great saphenous vein, you will see there is grafting done. Okay, there is grafting done. So, when you reflect, you see this kind of picture. Okay, you see this kind of picture. So now, okay, there are five minutes more. We will discuss very swiftly. uh the structures inside the anterior so this is why i was telling you about internal thoracic artery is the reason is that internal thoracic artery here you will see in the it is of course because it is parallel to the sternum you will see as a part of correct that is the anterior mediastinum so just i am labeling it here and you will see the internal thoracic artery and what you will see you will see two ligaments and you will see the ligaments that is the sternopericardial ligament sternopericardial manje kay which is connecting the sternum and the pericardial sac 
and the pericardial sac. Everything is in the name. You don't have to mug up anything. Sternopericardial ligament. Okay, this green color I have shown you. So, the ligament ka kya kaam hai? It is going to keep things in position. Okay. And restrol is the fatty tissue. Okay, restrol is the fatty tissue. So, uh, I think I am able to tell you about the anterior mediastinum. Now, middle mediastinum is the heart and coronaries and all that, which we are going to discuss later on. And one more thing, this we saw parts of mediastinum. Ye upar, niche, aage, piche, par, ye mediastinum ke boundaries ke. There is a very simple diagram. How you understand what is mediastinum? See, if this is a thoracic cavity. Yeah. So, if this is a thoracic cavity, you need to define mediastinum as well. Uh, they ask you define mediastinum. So, this is the thoracic cavity. Here you have the two lungs. When you take a cross section, they appear this way. So, this area in middle, this is the mediastinum. This basic diagram, see this is the anterior part, I will orient you. Here is the vertebral column. So, this is the anterior. This is the sternum. This simple 2D diagram which is given in old books, you, it will solve. So, this is, you when you write, instead of defining mediastinum, or you can simply draw this diagram, this is mediastinum. This is left lung, this is the right lung. Because you are seeing the person from behind. So, this is the mediastinum. This simple diagram can solve so many questions and uh, rather in uh, if you want to define it, what you have to say? Mediastinum, this is the textbook definition, I am not telling of my own. It is the middle space left in the thoracic cavity. See the middle space left in the thoracic cavity in between the lungs. Understood? In between the lungs. So, it may laterally already lungs hai. But laterally you have the medial border of the lung. Laterally you have the, to, laterally to the mediastinum you have the medial border. This is the lateral border of the lung. Okay, when we will see the in detail how many borders of the lung like we saw for kidney or uterus or ureter, this uh, urinary bladder etc. When we will discuss lungs we will talk. But ye medial hai, ye lateral hai, correct. So ye lung ka medial boundary ho gaya. And this is the lateral boundary. Okay, this is the lateral. This is the lateral boundary. Lateral border of the lung and, or surface rather than border, you should use the word surface. And this is the medial surface of the lung. Okay, medial surface of the lung. So, medial surface. So, lateral border of the mediastinum is formed by the medial border of the lung. Of the lung. So, simple definition of the uh, this yeah, mediastinum is that the space in the th in in the middle in the thoracic cavity which is left over, which is left over in between the two lungs is called as the mediastinum. Very simple. So, you draw this diagram, then you draw this diagram. See, this diagram is not given in the new textbooks. I if you I appreciate if you take a screenshot, even I'll take a screenshot for you. And uh, this one is uh, for the, yeah. Okay. Now, uh, there are just 30 seconds left. I will end this meeting. We will start a new meeting and then we will discuss the intercostal uh, muscle space and, uh, and what more, one more thing. Yeah, muscles and vessels. Okay.